What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more Jennifer Rush. And we're returning to Movin' 1985. Luca is sort of in my way here, but we'll see what we can do. And again, shout out to Darren for sending me the five album compilation. So, despite the microscopic text on the back of the album here, I can tell you that the next tune is If You're Ever Gonna Lose My Love, which is a hypothetical, but we don't get the second half of it, so if-then statement is sort of the structure that it suggests, though as an editor's note I should point out that you don't often have to include the then because it's implied by the structure overall of the syntax. Nevertheless, that's not an important point. The important comment is that we don't know what the condition is. We don't know what information she's going to provide that would indicate when that might happen, what event might facilitate the loss of her love, but it's certainly a possibility, it's certainly a suggestion, so it doesn't sound romantically utopian, because if you're super infatuated, if you're very excited about the romantic connection you have with another person, you're not even thinking about that, that's completely off the radar. So to say that if you're ever going to lose my love XYZ, then you're at least pondering the possibility of that taking place, so I wonder if this is a song that relates to trust, or if it's a song that relates to a lack of reciprocation when it comes to consideration or emotional feeling. Either way, I'll see what I can pick up on a first listen. This is Jennifer Rush. The tune is If You're Ever Gonna Lose My Love, and it's from her 1985 album, Movin'. <laughs>
out sonically. I guess it's just the guitar. There's a couple of sonic elements in there that I wasn't sure what was making the sound. One almost sounded like near the back half of the tune, like an electronic version of a bagpipe or something. It was buried beneath some of the other sounds, so I'm not certain about it. But it's interesting. The song was actually much more positive and warm at the idea of the love being lost than I would expect. And maybe that's partly because of the phrasing of the title, which is not really a criticism, but again, I'm an editor, I think about these things. If you say, if you ever lose my love, then the second implied part or unknown part, I would be more expecting could have a positive twist to it than, than I'll bring it back, I'll help you find it, as she says. But when you say, if you're ever gonna lose my love, I don't know, for some reason that phrasing, which is a bit more verbose, it feels like there's a conditional that this is why it's going to happen. So, again, just the phrasing of the title alone had me thinking in a different direction than it turned out to be. But yes, some very powerful vocals, a sort of down-tempo rock ballad, synth rock ballad is how it felt. I do enjoy not only the guitar, but there was this deep, like, pad synth that in a couple moments it really stood out. I think it was like leading into the next verse both times, or the first verse and the second verse, but it had a very rich and lush sound to it, so I enjoyed that. And yeah, it's the kind of tune that you could see a slow dance happening to, and given that it is about the desire to keep a flame of love alive, which is interesting, because she says like, or it seemed to be, that she said even if he ends up walking away and not finding her love and coming back, that he's always going to be a part of her life and saying that, you know, you probably don't even realize how much you've changed, how much of a difference you've made to me, and it's so very powerful. So again, even if you don't find my love again, you're always going to be in my mind, you're always going to be part of my life, but hoping at the same time that if something leads to a breakdown in the emotional connection and maybe his love for her wanes or withers, that she's going to do everything she can to make him see it, to make him find it, and turn it around. So again, more emotionally optimistic than I expected based on the title, in part because of the phrasing. Again, that 80s synth rock ballad type of feel, but that is in no way a dismissal or a downplaying of the quality of the sonics. Again, there were some elements in there that I really enjoyed, even as I had a problem trying to identify them. There was a point earlier where it felt like there was this plucked string type of sound, but again, it felt electronic, so I'm not sure quite what that was. And she has a very expressive voice, so when she goes big like that, the vibrato or just her vocal technique has a very resonating sound and it's hard to ignore. It becomes the central focus sonically, even if I'm trying to get a sense for the overall composition and arrangement. So once again, shout out to Darren. When we come back, it'll be another song that I can't read on either the back of the album or the compilation box set, but we'll get to it when we get there. Do let me know what you think and I will see you then. Peace.